I'm going to present Evo. Uh, Evo uh, will probably tell you, but uh, something to do with Bangkok podcast. Podcast. Are you going to t- say that? Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say anymore. You're going to say anymore. Okay. So I'm going to hand over to Evo, who's going to give some lessons he's learned through something called Bangkok podcast. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. So let's mention briefly, um, my name is Evo, and I'm going to be talking about the five, no, that's not right, uh, 17 <laughs> most fascinating things I've learned behind the microphone to make my podcast. My introduction to Thailand um, came as my wife and I, Sheila right there, um, we stayed for three months in a shop house in Renong, Thailand, as our first introduction to your country in May, which is the beginning of the rainy season, in the rainiest province of Thailand. Did I mention three months? And we stayed there. We did. But we must have loved it because in January of 2016, we moved here full time and became uh, a hockey like the rest of you. That's really where the story begins. Because it's where I met this guy, large Canadian expat named Greg Jorgensen. And through mutual friends, we got together and decided we should relaunch something called the Bangkok Podcast, which is what I'm going to be talking about with you guys uh, today. 33 episodes later, God, it's been a half a year already that Greg and I have been doing the show, and I'm learning more about this adopted city of mine from behind the microphone. We share expat experiences that are not bars, temples, and bizarre bars. You have enough coverage of that as it is right now. So we talk about other sorts of things in Bangkok, and as I said, I'm learning a lot from behind the microphone. Now, my partner Greg has been here for since 2001, so he's lived through a lot of the political turmoil and unrest that many of you have as well. Me, I'm an American. I showed up in the country and had no idea of something like military coups and what has actually existed, so I'm learning a lot as I go. Recently on the program, I've learned something you may or may not know about Bangkok. It's legal to own firearms in Thailand. It's legal to defend yourself with a firearm in Thailand. However, if you wind up killing the person with that firearm, even if he was likely to kill you or your family, you will be tried or you will be arrested and tried for murder. And you have to prove you didn't intentionally kill the guy. Which for Americans kind of strange. Staying on the idea of death and destruction, we have, or I have learned recently that I live in the second most deadly country in the world for traffic fatalities. We're only outflanked by everyone's top tourist destination, Libya. <laughs> and I actually own a motorbike now, which is kind of nuts. Um, but if I don't die from somebody slamming into me with a pickup truck on my motorbike, it's likely asphyxiation will take me or the rest of you and you may not know this, but I learned recently on one of our shows that Crocodile, Bangkok's Green Lung, is under serious threat of development. So air quality is about to get worse. Ooh. Go there and see it now if you haven't seen it. On the topic of bad news, I now understand why the beer I like to drink, quality craft beer, costs so stinking much money in this country, and what a huge hurdle that the Thai beer aficionados have trying to change some of the laws to make high quality beer prices go down, which is a substantial for me a great thing. I've also learned that while I stand up here and I look pretty white, apparently my armpits aren't white enough. <laughs> As products like these can even tell me. Um, one of the more amazing things I've learned recently is about a gentleman who is from Alaska, who owns a coffee plantation in Hawaii. He taught a guy from Indiana how to grow coffee in Thailand. And now that guy is training farmers in Thailand how to grow some of the best coffee in the entire world. Fascinating stuff I learned from the program. I learned about Bangkok's complicated and love-hate, if you will, relationship with street food. And the plight of people like office workers who depend on it as an inexpensive source of food. And also the vendors themselves are reliant for their livelihood. It's part of Bangkok's eventual march towards something called Bangkok 250, which is Bangkok's 250th birthday as the capital of Thailand. Big civic push happening right now, which I've learned from the program is something that's not necessarily universally loved or or even being uniformly spread out in the city. But there is at least one group of people, perhaps 
some of our most deserving or most needy uh, out there, the disabled. They actually welcome these changes with open arms because they've been working very hard to make the city governments and the state government actually follow through on some accessibility programs. So Transportation for All is kind of excited about the entire and, and good for them. You likely already know how great medical care is in Thailand. It's a huge medical tourism hotspot that we live in here in Bangkok. But what you may not know, I learned recently, actually on last week's program, that the Thai medical staff is so good now, homegrown Thai talent is now leaving Thailand to go teach advanced medical skills to students back in the West. That is how amazing the medical care we have here in Bangkok actually is. Fantastic. Although those doctors will probably still over-prescribe medication to you. <laughs> Get your bag of pills, although there probably won't be any nasal decongestants because you might only cook that with it. Um, I've learned also recently how fantastically central 7-Eleven is to Bangkok and Bangkokians like ourselves because where else can we pay our electric bill and get coffee that's not terribly oversweetened. Um, I've learned to embrace the mall culture. Not because I'm suddenly high so and super fashionable, but because it really is the best place to escape the never-ending, relentless heat of Bangkok. <laughs> and I've also learned how to say mayak dainaka to a lovely little old lady who wants to offer to have me help her feed the birds in the park. I say no to her so her two sons don't come out of the bushes and demand I pay her 500 baht for the privilege. Scammers are everywhere in this town. And I'm learning more about mysticism in Thailand. Like, we have these tattoos called Sakyang that if you put them on a taxi, is good luck. If you put them on your body, they can temporarily possess your body at least for one week in the year. But it's like a one rock. It's amazing. And that ghosts and spirits have an affinity for red sugar and drinks. <laughs> but the biggest thing I've learned from the Bangkok podcast is that I really love learning more about this new town that I've been in for a little over a year and a half and the great connections and things that I have made throughout the process. This, by the way, is in Bangkok. It's an American restaurant called Charlie Browns. It's wonderful. Um, little things like that that I learned. So thanks for listening to me, and hopefully I can convince you guys all to listen to the Bangkok podcast. Cheers.